Yeah, those wise men, they brought some precious gifts for Jesus. Gold, frankincense, myrrh. Uh, significance to those gifts, we'll talk a little bit more about them in a minute. But one of the greatest gifts they brought was a gift for us. To show that Jesus came for you and me. And to give us an example to follow of how to respond to the coming of Jesus for us. They showed us that we should be seeking after what is different from anything else in this world. The one who is different from anyone else in this world. Who can really help us in a very hurting, evil world. They showed us how to respond in thanksgiving and praise when you find Jesus. And to give him the greatest gifts of all because he deserves everything we can give him. We'll look at that a little bit more closely here as we consider epiphany today. That's what we're celebrating, the epiphany. That word literally means in the dictionary an appearance or manifestation, especially of a divine being. And that's what has happened for us now. On Christmas when Jesus was born, it was God revealing himself to us in the flesh. Jesus, born in that manger, was real God. Coming so we can know God especially know the love of God. So like the wise men, we are Gentiles who are seeking something just like that. The true God that we can go and find and receive a real blessing beyond anything this world can give to us. The wise men were non-Jewish scholars from the distant east. Uh, We know that they came from a foreign land far away. And it says that they were from the east in verse 1 of our text. So somewhere over Iran, Iraq, that direction, towards the east of where Israel is today. That means that they were Gentiles. They were not Jewish people. They were not from the the nation of Israel. And that's good news for you and me because I don't think there's too many of us here who probably are Jewish by, by birth, by blood. And it's good to know that God had a special call even for these Gentiles. And they were wise men, educated men. So as they traveled from that distant land in the east, they were wise and they were studying the stars. Astronomers. They would study those stars and astrologers and that they would study the significance of the stars and how it impacted their lives. As they watched those stars, they knew something very special was happening when this particular star appeared to them. That it marked the birth of someone who would change this world in a significant way. And that's good. Whether they had full faith in who Jesus was, as it says, they came to find the king of the Jews. Whether they really understood the full significance of that isn't clear to us at first. But regardless, they did what is appropriate. They went looking for this child. They knew something important was happening. That is an example for us to follow too. To travel from a great distance if necessary. But we don't have to go that far. Because Jesus has come to us right here where we are. We know he's here. He's not sitting in a manger in Jerusalem anymore. He's reigning in heaven above and he is present around us everywhere. But we can find him especially in his word that he spoke and left for us. We can find him in his very body and blood present in this supper. We are wise then to follow the example of these Gentile kings, these wise men, not kings necessarily. That's what you hear all the time, we three kings. It doesn't say they were really even kings. Wise, educated men that are a lot like us, seekers after truth. But then the next thing we should do is to rejoice exceedingly with great joy, just like these wise men did. They rejoiced, it says, when they saw this star. They knew it was something special. And in particular, they rejoiced when they went to see King Herod. And then they came out from having talked to Herod. And the star appeared over the little village of Bethlehem. Keep in mind, this was not Christmas night. We see that in all the stories and we see it in nativity sets. This was an event that occurred several months later. Because wise men didn't get there right away Christmas night. That's when that star first appeared. But they're traveling from months and months away over to the east. By the time they got there then and came to talk to Herod, then they came out and were looking, well, how do we find it now? And this star appeared in a special way right over that little town of Bethlehem. 
it says that it went before them to rest over the place where the child was. So this was a very significant, special thing that was going on. Not a usual astronomical phenomenon. Usually astronomy, you see stars up in the heavens, they're covering a whole area. You can see them in the whole hemisphere. But this was a pinpoint light that pointed the way to where Jesus was at in the little village of Bethlehem. So they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy because it was clear this was something miraculous. God was doing something unusual here. We should respond in the same way because Jesus has appeared to us in a miraculous way. His glory has been shown to us in something that's out of the ordinary. When the disciples were up on the Mount of Transfiguration and Jesus revealed his brilliance and brightness of heaven itself, they knew this is something unique. This guy is not just a great teacher, but he is God himself in our midst. And Jesus has made that known for you and me too. He has fulfilled the prophecies of old that show he is indeed God and man, our Savior. In our first reading today from Isaiah 60, uh, if you listen to those prophecies that were spoken there, they've all been fulfilled in Jesus. Verse 1, light has come. Yeah, the light there in Bethlehem there, the first Christmas. Now a light of hope for you and me. And then verse 2, darkness was on the peoples, but his glory is seen upon us. Glory, that's revealing God to us. Those wise men saw that Jesus was someone very special. In fact, God, they saw then love in the flesh and we've seen that love the way he lived his life sinless life and the way he sacrificed himself for us giving everything for us yes indeed we have seen the glory of God and verse 3 of Isaiah 60 the nation shall come to your light that's been fulfilled too as these wise men came from the east back then 2,000 years ago so still today Wise people who see who Jesus really is still come to him from afar, worshiping him from all over the earth. I've seen it in nations all around this this world, in South America, Central America, South Africa, Ethiopia, and all these places, countless individuals who see that Jesus is indeed the Savior we need, God in the flesh for us. And in verse 6 of Isaiah 60, they shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim good news. That was fulfilled back then when those wise men brought those gifts. And they proclaimed that good news that is there for us today. So yes, the prophecies have been fulfilled in old days. And now we continue to see the fulfillment in what Jesus has done for us. He did come in the flesh to die for us. To rise for us. And that good news has been proclaimed ever since. The disciples who saw him in the flesh spoke those words that are here for us to hear today. And Jesus has done a miracle for us too. You know, that star was miraculous in that it guided those wise men to the little town of Bethlehem. It's miraculous that you're sitting here this morning. Because in a world that's so filled with sin, including right in your own heart, why would we ever believe in a God who has said we are sinners and we deserve destruction? We don't like to hear such things. And yet we believe because we know he is also the God who loves us and gives us deliverance from that destruction. And we have received the Holy Spirit in a miraculous way through the washing of baptism so we can believe this is true. So we have been led to Jesus in faith. And we trust that he is indeed the Savior of the world, the Holy One set apart from all other leaders of this world. That's the good news in a world where leaders have questionable power and abuse their power and do foolish things in their roles of leadership. It's good to know that we have an almighty king who never does anything wrong, who loves us no matter what and is powerful beyond the power of the nations of this world. And when they all collapse, which they will, he'll be the one man standing. He'll be almighty God in control. And he will be there for you and for me as our savior for eternity. That's the good news that we have seen as we've followed the lead of the wise men to Jesus, our Savior. And that leads us then to the appropriate response that having received Jesus as Savior, to give our gifts to him like the wise men did before us. Those wise men, as we said, brought these special gifts, this gold and frankincense and myrrh, these significant gifts that were honoring Jesus for who he really was. The gold that was offered to him was a sign of recognizing 
that he was indeed a king, a ruler in control of the universe. And so gold's a fitting gift for someone who is a king. Frankincense, which is a gift you give to the divine, to God. It offers up this aroma as you burn it, this smoke that rises up to the heavens as an offering to God in thanksgiving and praise to him. And then myrrh, such as what was used to wrap bodies when they were prepared for burial, a symbol of the sacrifice that this Savior would make for you and for me. These gifts were very fitting gifts for Jesus our Messiah. And these wise men also offer these gifts in a very significant way. That's an important point from our text in verse 12. It says, after they gave their gifts, they didn't hang around to see what Jesus would do for them. It says, instead, they departed to their own country. They got back on their camels, likely, and headed back off to the east. They didn't wait around to get something paid back to them because they offered their gifts. They didn't hang around to see if this guy would rise up to become the new king of that Jerusalem region and then give them some special favor. They saw the king. They knew God had done something significant there. And by faith, they were led to return to their own country and tell what they had seen there. The gospel started spreading all the way back even then as these wise men shared their gifts with the world. We follow this example then as we also... Come to him with exceedingly great joy. Because we have seen the light of Christ. In the shining word that he gives to us, it shines more brilliantly than any star in the heavens. It shows us our salvation. And so we receive this gift with joy that leads us to give our best gifts in thanksgiving to him. Also, in pure worship of Jesus, not expecting anything back. When we give our gifts, when you give your offerings... You shouldn't say, okay, God, I, I put in my money. Now, what are you going to do for me this week? Are you going to give me that job I've been looking for? Are you going to make my money increase and give me something good so I can buy that car I want? That's not the way it works. We give these gifts because we already have all we need. We give these gifts in thanksgiving for life of peace and contentment, for real joy in our hearts, real hope beyond the evil of this world. We give these gifts to serve the Lord. And we do it in various ways, such as giving our time, a sacrificial gift, a lot like myrrh, time to serve the Lord. can be a sacrifice. Maybe even going to a foreign country. We've had lots of groups from our church go to other countries. We've had groups who've gone to Guatemala. Here's uh, Becky Svant down with some of the people we work with in Santiago Zamora, Guatemala, sharing God's love there. We even have three wise guys who went to Guatemala to serve down there. It's just a That's just kind of an inside joke of these three guys who like to show off their wisdom in the midst of the group there. Uh, But anyway, in Guatemala and throughout the world, taking these gifts to the world to see Christ. They also have given their talents in various ways, using our abilities to serve the Lord here at Faith and as ushers or elders or altar guild preparing the table so we can have the Lord's Supper or serving as teachers for our programs here at church. Many ways here in the faith community, right in our own building and out into the world, such as at Franklin Avenue Mission, going and serving meals there, serving out in our community and serving in the community where you are in your daily life. If it's as a teacher in the public school, great teaching and showing God's love there where it's so needed. If it's in the workplace where you're witnessing to those in the cubicle next to you or the person standing at the coffee pot who's going through a terrible grieving time at the death of a loved one. That is where we can use our talents to be comforters and supporters and witnesses of Christ. Those are gifts that honor him. Frankincense that is rising up as a sweet smelling offering to the Lord. Whenever you use the abilities you have to honor Jesus and share his love with the world, it is like frankincense, a gift that raises up to the nostrils of God and is sweet smelling to him and pleasing in his sight. We also then give our financial gifts, our um, gold that we can offer up to the Lord. As we give those gifts in the plate, it is giving our treasure to help proclaim that good news to the world. To bring that light into darkened places. This is another gift that we can give to the king. The king above all kings. The king of the universe. 
who is the source of all the gold in the world, who made it all in a moment at the creation of this world. We give it back to him and say, you provided it all, you'll take care of me, I know you will. So my gifts that I give in that plate are not trying to pay you off in any way, but to thank you because I know you will take care of me. And so I give you the best, knowing you'll give me all the rest that I need every day. This is our way of following that example of these wise men. And it's the kind of thing that we do as we live as faithful disciples in this world. The wise men set us a great example of being faithful disciples. A disciple technically is one who is learning from God. They learned well to know that they should go and seek Jesus, this, this little child born in Bethlehem. We learn well when we do the same thing. We go and follow him. And we learn then that life, if we are to continue as Christians in this world, is not going to be easy. But with the Lord to guide us, he will bless us in all of our endeavors. He will guide us where he wants us to be, and he will bless it in the end. He will not fail us. Our journeys will be successful as the wise men were successful in their journey. I invite you especially to come out next Saturday. You may say, yeah, that forum, I don't have time for that. And they've already got everything planned out already anyway. I hear those kind of comments. So the budget's already set. The people are already in control. What's it matter? They do what they want anyway. Not true. Not true at all. The input of every member of this congregational family is important because every one of you is a disciple who is important in the body of Christ. And I encourage you to please come next Saturday, just a few hours out of the day, but setting a course for where we're heading into the long-term future. The future of the Christian church in America is not going to be an easy one. Churches are closing their doors every day in this country. People are flocking away from the church instead of to the church because it's not the comfortable thing to do anymore. In fact, you're more likely to be looked down upon for going to church than respected for it. And if we are to survive as a Christian church presence in the United States in the next decade, it'll take some courageous effort to go where the star leads, where Jesus leads, to go and do what may not be easy, to offer sacrificial gifts that may not be easy to give, time and efforts and talents that are hard to give up because we're so busy with so many other things in life. Yes, I know how it goes. But that is what the Lord will bless. And he will give us joy that the world cannot give so that we can respond with exceedingly great joy to what matters most to know our Savior and follow our Savior and proclaim that Savior who is the only hope for this dark world. It may not be popular, it may not be comfortable, but it is the thing that people need more than anything else in this world. And we have that treasure to share. As the wise men did it with courage, let us do the same. To follow to where Jesus has led us, to his gifts that we receive, that we can share, that we might then freely give him all the honor and praise our joyful worship, just as the wise men did so long ago. May God bless us to that end, that we might follow him all the way to salvation and lead many more to do the same.